Now, I've got a headline for you. It reads, Tulsi Gabbard, a voice of reason. Joe Concha wrote that, and he joins me now. Yes. The voice of reason, make your case. Okay, I'll have Tulsi make her case for me. This is the exact quote that really grabbed me. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. She talks about how they are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms enshrined in our Constitution. Whoa, <laughs> that's saying it, isn't She it? doesn't hold back, does she? No. Uh, yeah, and, and look, this isn't your father's Democratic Party anymore, right? Remember JFK? He ran on cutting tax taxes and beefing up the military. Jimmy Carter had the temerity to be a pro-life Democrat, which would never fly in today's Democratic Party. Okay. Bill Clinton actually declared that the era of big government is over. He passed welfare reform and Newt Gingrich actually worked with the other side and had this thing called a balanced budget amendment, which, oh, don't spend what you don't have. Wow, that's amazing. So these are all common sense things that we can agree with. And now what she's saying is that it's a party that caters to elites in big cities instead of the little guy like they used to in places like Scranton, Pennsylvania. I agree with what she says. One thing she did say, though, was that about the warmongers yes. who are funding Funding, you know, the funding, the aid that goes to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Evidently, she opposes that. That's quite an extreme position. Her fear, and you could disagree with it, I'm not saying I agree with her on right. everything, right. Uh, is that we are now escalating towards eventually a nuclear conflict with Russia. So maybe we should try, like we did during the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, to, to find some sort of middle ground or compromise. Now, you could agree or disagree with that, but she's not afraid to state her opinion, and that's why so, she doesn't go along with the Democratic Party, where seemingly everybody toes the line. You got it. Uh, White House economic advice. Cecilia Rouse blaming Putin for high cost, high prices. Roll tape. Part of the challenge for food is actually through energy. And so Putin's war against Ukraine, uh, where he has weaponized natural gas, he's weaponized energy, shows up in food prices as well. Uh, it's why the president is focused on trying to bring down costs. The Inflation Reduction Act, while it doesn't directly speak to food, uh, does go to medical care. It goes to energy costs. And uh, and so we are it focused on trying to help, help families get through this. Yeah, whoop de doo Joe. None of this stuff takes effect until next year. They'll fight inflation next year. Precisely. And again, blaming Putin, right? In this situation, the invasion of Ukraine happened in February of this year. Inflation has been going up since January from the previous year. In other words, for 13 months, we saw this steady incline in inflation. So to now just blame Putin and blame everything on them, it shows that this administration simply refuses to take responsibility for things like the Inflation Reduction Act, which only put more money into the economy, weakened the dollar, and is, and is accelerating inflation. And that's not me saying that. That's Wharton School of Business or the Congressional Budget Office all agree the Inflation Reduction Act doesn't reduce inflation. It only helps increase it. Yet this administration's tone deaf, and that's why they're going to take a beating come November uh, 6th, I believe it is, right, the midterms? Uh, uh, 23 yeah. days from now, 22 days from now. It's, yeah, something yeah. like that. So uh, the, 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 I think inflation is going to be the overwhelming driver in this uh, particular... I can't see how it could not be the overwhelming driver. It's the economy, stupid. <laughs> you well said. Sorry Thanks, Joe.